How are we doing Game Leapers? I'm Coach Shiggs and I'm hella excited to bring you guys this video. I'll be analyzing a game of an Akali player in Korea who has a 100% win rate in Diamond 4, 55 wins and 0 losses. I'll be showing you how this player gets the most out of Akali's kit, punishes enemy mistakes and snowballs out of control. There are however, some mistakes that she makes and they might be the same mistakes you're making so make sure you stick around. Would also appreciate it fam if you could like the video, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content, and check out GameLeap.com to unlock your potential on Summoner's Rift. Videos, courses, guides made by the best to help you be the best. Let's get into it. First off, let's take a look at his OPGG. It's a fresh account of 45 of the 55 wins have been with Akali. In every Akali game, he takes a ledge cute with Sudden Impact, Ghost Power and Ravenous, and Precision as his secondary tree electing to go with Presence of Mind and Coup de Gras. Minor runes are always the same, two adaptive forces and then magic resist or armor, depending on the matchup. In almost every game, his first three major items are the same. Buys Doran's shield at the start, of course, and builds Gunblade, Sorceress Shoes, and Leandries. After that, it's all situational, meaning it depends on the state of the game. Death Cab, Void Staff, Zonyas, Banshees, Morellos, Magis, Lichbane, even Nashes have all been built at some point. I'd recommend planning your build and champion select according to the enemy composition. If they have lots of healing, Vladimir, Silas, Staraka, Morellos is the go-to. If their damage is mostly AD, then Zonyas becomes optimal. Skill order is the same every game, QEW, QMAX into EMAX. So the game we're reviewing guys is this last one, this 18-3-5 one against Katarina. So the tier average is Diamond 3. You guys are going to learn something. Now I always tell students that you can climb to Diamond 4 with Micro alone. And the main reason this dude stomps every lane is because he has mastered Arkali and knows the ins and outs of every matchup. Experience is the best teacher in that respect, but watching and analyzing the best Arkali's play will also help you guys out. It's important to understand the matchup, Arkali against Katarina. This 1v1 is a war of passives until level 6, Akali's enhanced autos against Katarina's daggers. When both hit level 6, it really is a case of all inning until the death. So knowing Akali's most efficient combos is essential. Level 1 Akali wins, so you want to play aggressive. As the first wave collides, she stands next to the melee minions to try to pressure Katarina. If Kat moves up, Akali harasses her. If she stands back, then Akali denies CS. It's a win-win. She ensures the push by auto-attacking the first creep, but doesn't need to auto-attack it again as you guys see here. When you have an advantage, you want to slow the game down and last hit. This means that the wave is going to be away from Cat's tower as long as possible. When the second wave collides, Akali should have hard shoved to bounce back the third wave to the middle of the lane. Instead, she semi-commits to it, and the wave is closer to Cat's tower for the next coming waves, meaning Akali is easier to gank, and Cat is a lot safer. As you can see here, Akali isn't auto-attacking the wave enough, nor using her abilities on the wave, which is two things you want to do if you want to shove a wave. Let's talk about this level 3 trade. When Cat shumpos into Akali, Akali immediately Ws knowing Cat can't shumpo back out with only one point in her E. Cat then Ws, which is very standard, and Akali uses her E to evade the damage and initiate back onto Cat. Your best shot at landing E is when you're close to them. Akali follows up with a Q and auto attacks, activating her passive, which is essential. A little bit later on, Akali tries to thin this wave out to prevent it from crashing into a tower, which is good. Notice again how she E's to avoid Cat's W damage. All of a sudden, a fight breaks out, and Akali looks at the map and has to follow here because the fight is a lot more important than three creeps mid. She W's to restore energy and increase her movement speed, and stalls out Katarina knowing Camilla's rotating down. Easy kill. She then shoves out mid to deny Cat minion gold and XP, and this also eliminates the possibility of Cat setting up a freeze. At any stage in a game, capitalizing on kills and deaths is very important. In most early game scenarios, this translates to minion waves, dragons, rift heralds, and turret plates. Akali returns mid and shoves out wave 5 to invade with Kindred. She patiently waits in fog, which is very important when playing an assassin, and picks up two kills in the process. But let's break down the micro here. The most common ultimate combos with Akali start with the first use of her R, which guarantees E to hit. You then E back onto the enemy and Q, auto attack, second use of ultimate. Against Rek'Sai, she R's and E's instantly. E's again to return to Rek'Sai and simply auto attacks and Q's. Knowing Set might run away, she then W's for movement speed and to replenish energy, auto attacks, Q's, second use of ult. Set is dead here regardless of what Akali presses, I get that, but if we were to nitpick, she should have queued before auto-attacking to utilize her passive. This is an important point in the game, guys. Akali just picked up two kills, right, and is ahead of Katarina in terms of gold and XP, but only when that gold is invested does it matter. So it's just sitting there at the moment. So at this point in time, Katarina is actually very close to Akali in terms of damage and items, and has kill pressure in this lane, especially if Akali misplays, and that's what we're going to see here regarding Akali's wave management. 
She decides to shove this wave when she should have slow pushed. Remember, when you have an advantage, slow the lane down. Now the lane's being played on Kat's side, and the longer the lane for Katarina, the more dangerous it is for Akali because there's more room to operate for Kat. Also gives Rek'Sai an opportunity to gank. Akali gets chunked to 50% HP, gets very greedy, overextends, and has to blow her flash. All because of what? She didn't deal with the wave correctly. For the next few minutes, there's a back and forth between the two champions until Katarina jumps into Akali and Kindred. Same combo as earlier. Leads with R and E, E's back, Q, auto attack, and that's enough to kill. If Kat survived that combo, then Akali could have executed with the second use of her R. If you're enjoying the video so far, guys, please remember to drop a like. It helps us out and motivates us even more to bring you this great daily content. Akali gets the turret and shoves the next wave, thus maximizing her game, which is good, and looks to recall until a fight starts. Here it's your job again to assess the situation on the fly, and the simplest way is to count how many champions are in the fight. Kayla's trying to 1v2, Set might get to the fight, but Camille's TPing and you are there as well to match Set, so it's a 4v2 really. But Akali rightly prioritizes helping her team instead of recalling. After buying, Akali shoves out mid and looks to roam, and when shoving this wave, Akali isn't thinking too much about the CS. She's thinking of where she's going next, which is very important because lots of time can be wasted if we're not thinking ahead, guys. The more you think, the more you win. I love telling students that. She decides to roam top and picks off Kale and helps Camille take down the turret. Good. Soon after, Akali collects the mid wave, but makes an obvious mistake here, walking into fog. When the game opens up and towers are falling, there are a lot more ambush points for both teams, so walking into areas without vision can result in death. Akali should ignore her bot side and play top side of the map with Kindred. Now I'm guessing she trusted herself to outplay the enemy team if they were here, but it's still greedy, right? Had this happened after 20 minutes, maybe the enemy team takes Baron and the lead is thrown. We're now in mid game, which is most often when your bot lane rotates mid, and as Akali, you venture to a side lane, usually the lane closest to the primary objective if you don't have TP. So, based on that information, can you guys see Akali's mistake here? The Camille with TP should have picked up bot, and she was going to, and Akali goes top, so she's closer to Rift Herald, but they give up Rift because Akali goes bot. But because the enemy team is taking Rift Herald here, guys, Akali has to impose a cost. There has to be some sort of trade elsewhere on the map, and she doesn't even take this tower, which is another mistake. The enemy team all of a sudden pushes down mid lane and uses their Rift Herald mid, and Akali rotates around. This subsequent fight is now very awkward, because the enemy team takes the tier 2 tower of Rift Herald, which wouldn't have happened if Akali was topside, and she's forced to step on Kate's traps to get to her. Instead, Set keeps Kate safe and plays it right, and Akali is forced to 1v1 Set away from the main fight. She could have potentially ran around Raptors and attacked the enemy team from behind, but the fight would have been over before she arrived. Let's break down this Cat Arena 1v1 and figure out why Akali didn't secure the kill here when she did in other situations. Her W and E are on cooldown at the start, so she Qs and R's, but doesn't auto attack, which is the biggest lesson here. Always make use of your passive guys. If an enemy is marked, auto attack them. She Qs off cooldown, of course, which is right, and auto attacks with her passive now, but because she didn't auto attack earlier, Cat isn't dead, and Akali panic flashes when she could have just secured that Cat kill with her second R. Instead, she has to R over the wall. So despite this Akali having a good early game, the last five minutes have been sloppy. And a reminder that this dude has a 100% win rate even when throwing like this. Now because Camille is top lane, Akali correctly picks up bot, but commits the same mistake, running through and into fog. Thankfully she is still fed and nukes Katarina, but that could very easily have been another death. So after 20 minutes guys, the key focus is around Baron. So when you don't have TP like Akali here, you have to be in around that area. For this fight, Akali actually plays it pretty well, but there are some key details here. Kindra doesn't have R. And Kate is so far ahead of center, so unless Akali can kill Kate, which she can't in this situation, these fights can never be won. The better play would have just been to shove out top and play in the enemy jungle looking for picks. Generally, when playing an assassin, the more linear the fight, the easier it is to play against. You want to be hard to play against, so playing in fog or flanking increases your threat as an assassin. The enemy team troll really hard. They win the fight with Caitlyn, alive and healthy, but decide to run mid instead of getting what? Baron. Rek'Sai would have been there as well to secure it. Baron is always more worth than one inhib, guys, and probably two. You can get that inhib anytime you want with Baron, but an inhib doesn't mean you get Baron. That's the difference. And watch what happens next. They start Baron when Akali's team is respawning. Akali gets a thousand gold shut down on Kate, kills Rek'Sai, and they get the Baron. Legit unreal. I uh, love diamond fiestas. Now, if she committed the same mistakes in higher elo, and I'd say at least GM, definitely challenger, this game would be over, and Caitlyn would hard carry with the Baron the other team would have got. Thankfully though, it's Diamond, and both teams are going to make mistakes, 
Fast forward, Mountain Drake is the main objective and in team fights it's important to have a plan and play to your win condition. If Akali kills Kate, they win. Akali makes a nice play, ease over and zones the enemy team, thus securing Drake. Nice. I'm going to show you guys one more fight in this game, okay, because it ends shortly after and it emphasizes the idea of playing to your win condition. Akali kills Kate. Easy win. How does she kill Kate in this situation? The Shroud is in a great position here. Generally having Shroud in the middle of a fight creates more opportunities. She ignores Set and uses the extra movement speed in her Shroud to R and Q onto Kate. Now Kate, yes, does headbutt a little bit, but you can't control how Kate's going to play. If she does that, it's your responsibility to capitalize on the situation. Yumi helps out and they secure the kill and the rest is GG well played. So let's recap what this game taught us, guys. Number one, know your champion and their kit. Number two, know your matchups and how to play level one, two, three, and six. Number three, when to slow push and why? When to hard push and why? Number four, squeezing the most value out of a situation after killing an enemy. Number five, plan ahead. What's next after killing this creep wave? Number six, side lane closest to the main objective when you don't have TP. Number seven, play and fight to your win condition. Number eight, assassins are most dangerous unseen. Use fog and flanks to get onto the enemy backline. Thanks so much for watching the video game with viewers. If you found this helpful and want to see more VOD reviews in the future, like the video and let us know in the comments. Any questions regarding the game, feel free to ask below. I'll get back to you. And remember to check out our website to enhance your game on the Rift. This has been Coach Eggs. Until next time, peace.